let's face it guys, counting is hard. Like I don't think anyone can say that they have never struggled with this. So today I am sharing with you three great techniques to help you with your counting. Hi everybody, welcome to the flute practice. My name is Tatiana and I am passionate about helping flute players like you take your playing to the next level. And we usually do that with a good dose of laughter. Okay, let's get straight into counting. So, so, so often I find that students that are struggling with counting are lacking the very basic fundamental kind of building blocks of how rhythm is constructed in music. And when this is missing, you can kind of stand on your head. You're just not gonna get it. So as a little recap, I am going to just take us back to some of these fundamentals before you guys are like, I know all about this pyramid scheme right over here. It's not a pyramid scheme. My question to you is, do you understand how it works, but you don't actually feel how it works? Because there is a difference. And I hope that today I will show you this and get you to really experience rhythms possibly for the first time. Okay, so basically what we need to understand with our brains is that two eighth notes fits into one quarter note. So if I'm getting the beat going nicely here, we need to understand that those two eighth notes are gonna fit ta, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two. <laughs> it's so fundamental, it's so foundational, but you'll be surprised how many people just don't actually fully grasp this. There's also the fact that two quarter notes fit into that half note. So we have ta, ta, those two beats. Of course, if you're struggling to even just kind of keep with a single beat on each one, I have a great video for you guys. I'm going to drop this in the links below to go check this out. Definitely go look at that as well. Okay, so those are the three tiers that we absolutely need to understand at this point. And I'm going to give us three little systems to help us to really experience them and feel them. The first system is using fruit names. Yes, fruit names. Kids love this, but I think this is great for adults too. Like we should be having just as much fun as kids. It works, it does, it works. So here is how it goes. Your quarter notes are going to be peach. They are peach. So we have peach, 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 just like that. Got it. Now, your half notes are going to be pear. So we've got pear, pear, pear. I like the pear, it's just a bit softer and kind of longer. It gives that feeling of those two beats in those half notes, right? Great. Now, your eighth notes are going to be apple. So you've got apple, 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 apple. There is one whole apple in that peach. So you've got apple, not apple, 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 right? One, two, one, two, one, two. So just try that, literally, literally try that. I'm gonna do it now. You guys are gonna do it along with me and see if you can keep up. So we've got peach, 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 peach. Then we're doing the pears. Pear, pear, and now apples. Apple, 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 apple. Cool? Easy? It really, really, really works. And if you're playing a piece of music and you're struggling with the rhythm, provided there's nothing more complicated in there for now, you could literally go through it and say, peach, apple, apple, peach, 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 apple, apple, peach, 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 why not? Of course, there are more sophisticated fruits. So for example, for 16th notes, we could have granadilla. That's right, we've got granadilla, 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 yummy. And if that was not enough, we could have strawberry for those triplets. So strawberry, 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 strawberry. Then we could even have some cool ones for like combinations of rhythms. Like if we have one eighth note and two sixteenth notes, we could have pineapple, 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 pineapple. Cool. Or the other way around, if we have those two sixteenth notes and we have the eighth notes, we could have passion fruit, passion fruit, passion fruit. Like, I don't know if everyone in the world calls granadillas granadillas and who calls them passion fruits, but I think they're like 
same WhatsApp group, same besties. Okay, and now we're getting to something that I do believe is truly uniquely South African. It's kind of like a baby orange, kind of mandarin. I don't even know. We call them nachis. Nachis. So you can use nachis nicely for dotted rhythm. So you've got na, chi, na, chi, na, chi. It works. Like you could literally go through pieces with your nachis and your pineapples. And you, you'd probably get pretty far. But okay, okay, I hear you. I hear you. We're not all five years old anymore. We are not relating the world with like apples and granadillas. So I'm going to show you some other little methods that I think are equally good, if not better. The next little method is a little bit complicated in the beginning to kind of learn. All of our quarter notes are going to be ta. Just ta, 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 ta. Just simple ta. Then our half notes are going to be ta, 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 ta. So we've got ta, 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 which is nice. We kind of get those, the sense of those two beats within that note. Then for all of our eighth notes, we are going to have ta, te, ta, te, ta, te. So we've got ta, te, ta, te, ta, te. And any of you know me, ta, te, yana, it's in my name. Don't, don't do that, don't do that. ta te ta te ta te Really important when using the system is even if we have an eighth note that's not on the strong beat, so it's not on the down beat, so if it's on the off beat, we're going to say te on that. So the off beat is always a te and the strong beat is always a ta. Ta te. So for example, if I was playing like reggae music, it would always be te, 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 te. Make sense? So just to keep it on the basic level again, I'm gonna keep it simple. So we'd have ta te ta te ta te. You're getting once again the sense of those two little beats in the one bigger beat. Or ta 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 or ta ta te ta ta te. Easy, 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 I hope. And then of course ta ah ta ah. And if you have like more than two beats, what's nice about this system is you just add ah, 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 ahs on. So it's like ta, ah, 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 ah. I mean, you can go on forever, right? Haha, -ha, great question. What happens to those semiquavers? Here's where it starts to get, in my opinion, a little bit weird. Like, I don't particularly love this. I don't know why. I just always felt a little bit embarrassed to say it. But you say tougher, tougher. That's right, ta, fa, te, fa, for your semi quaver. So you ta, fa, te, fa, 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 ta, fa, te, fa. Once you get used to it, it does work. And once again, every single note in that group of four notes has the same syllable attached to it always. So for example, if I have like the two little 16th note upbeat, it'll be te, fa, ta, fa, te, fa, ta, fa, te, fa, ta. Or like the opening of the Iber concerto. For tefer, tougher, tefer, tougher, tefer. I mean, you know, just in case you want to make your bear more difficult than it already is. What I like about this system is that all your dotted rhythms, you can kind of like do variations of it. So, for example, a normal dotted rhythm, if I was doing a quarter note with an eighth note, we'd just have a ta, te, ta, te, ta, te, ta kind of cool. It doesn't necessarily like really teach you the sound of the rhythm like the fruit names do, but it certainly does help to put the right syllables on the right beats if that makes sense. And if we were doing those like little groups that we had the pineapples and the passion fruits, we'd have ta te fa ta te fa ta or ta fa ta ta fa te ta fa te ta fa te. Like this is even confusing for my brain. So this is where it gets like a little bit like wordy and crazy and maybe not that practical. But, 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 here comes our last method. And I do think that this may be the best method actually, but I'm gonna let you guys decide and comment on that down below. So here's how this last method goes. It is the classic one and two and three and four and, and this is how it works. Basically the one, two, three, four are the beats of the bar, the main beats of the bar. The and is basically the kind of little in-between eighth note beat. Essentially, this method is using something called subdivision. 
And this is such an important concept, basically where we are taking the smaller note values to help us work out and count the bigger rhythms. Don't worry about this too much right now. I want us to just bear that as a concept in mind, subdivision. It's a thing, it's important. And that's basically what we are going to be doing here. So we have one is the downbeat and the and is the in-between beat. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now here is how it gets super duper duper useful. If I'm counting a piece of music, provided, fair enough here, that we are not going past eighth notes. For now, there is a kind of follow on system from this. So I've got one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. So you can see, I all I have to figure out now is, am I moving on the one, on the and, or am I moving on both? So am I moving on the number, one, two, three, four, or on the and? And like this, I can really kind of meticulously start working out rhythms. So the best way to demonstrate this is just to give you guys kind of like a little rhythm and just actually let you see this in action. So I'm going to just give you a little rhythm here and we're gonna clap and say the rhythms here. One, two, and three and four and one and two and three and four and so i'm trying to emphasize there which of those beats you would actually play on while this might be a little bit confusing in the beginning it is super useful once you kind of grasp it and get it it is so helpful to help you count you can also use this for more complicated rhythms, we mix it up. So for example, for those 16th notes, we can use a one knee and a one knee and a two e and a three and a four e and a. Also really great. Like with that previous little exercise, each of those little syllables have to stay with its note. So for example, if I have one and a two and a three and a four and a, that would be how it is. Or e and a, e and a, e and a. E and a. What is great though about this one and a two and a three and a four is you could always just use smaller and smaller counting values. So for example, if you were counting in eighth notes, then your each eighth note would be your one, two, three, four, whatever it might be, and the ands would be the little sixteenth notes in between. So you can adapt this method to varying pieces and styles, which is so great and so useful. If you guys struggle with rhythm and you need some extra help with rhythm, I'm going to recommend two things. Firstly, I'm going to recommend go check out this video that I did. It is like a beginner's guide to counting and using a metronome and how to really start sticking with that metronome and feeling basic beats. For any of you that really want to take your playing to the next level, join my Patreon community. And I am not just saying this because you're supporting me, which you would be doing by the way, but because I really think this is an exciting space to really support, encourage and motivate your flute journey. Happy practicing everyone.